Today is the World Hypertension Day. It is celebrated so that we can detect high blood pressure, treat it appropriately, and improve health and prevent certain cardiac and brain disturbances as a result of this high blood pressure. So first, most important thing is that how is this detected? A lot of time people come forward and say that, you know, I don't really have high blood pressure. It's only happening in the doctor's office. And that is something called as a white coat effect. But then there are some people who have persistent high blood pressure even outside the offices. How does one do a better measurement or an accurate measurement? Now we have something called as a 24-hour BP monitoring, which can measure blood pressure through the day and the night and tell you what the numerous readings are. Another important bit of information which comes from this is something called as the dipping phenomena at night. That means that usually the blood pressure is supposed to drop more than 10% at night. And in people who it does not drop, they are called as non-dippers. And they are also thus at risk to develop certain cardiovascular problems. So that's as far as the diagnosis and how do we follow the guidelines? There is different according to the age, but now there are very strict conditions that over 12080 should be considered and should be evaluated. What is the relationship and why does one get uh, blood pressure? Common conditions or situations are that simple things like stress, sedentary, lifestyle, excessive weight gain. And I want to bring your attention to another very common condition, which is often overlooked, is the presence of snoring. So what does snoring have to do with high blood pressure? But snoring, persistent snoring, loud snoring, when accompanied by pauses in breathing, a condition called as sleep apnea, this can cause disturbances in the night sleep, drop in the oxygen, raise the sympathetic drive at night, and can cause first maybe non-dipping phenomena, and then a gradually increase in blood pressure. It's been seen that almost maybe 30 to 40 to 50 percent of patients with high with sleep apnea can have high blood pressure and similar patients with high blood pressure who report snoring 30 to 40 percent may have a coexistent sleep apnea. However, in patients who have resistant hypertension, that means more than three drugs required to control blood pressure, the presence of sleep apnea can be almost to the tune of 80 to 90 percent. Why is all this important is that if we are to treat the high blood pressure, we should have an overall approach or what is called as a multidisciplinary approach that we control stress, the diet, lifestyle, medications, evaluate the sleep, check maybe a sleep study is required and treat accordingly. So thus, in this occasion or on this occasion, the World Sleep Day, sorry, World Hypertension Day, one should try and understand how one can improve the overall health. So what happens if the blood pressure is not treated or it sits there undiagnosed and untreated? It can damage the arteries, it can cause cardiac problems, heart attacks, brain strokes, etc. Thus known as a silent killer, can damage the kidneys. So it should be appropriately diagnosed and managed so as to take care of your overall health. I hope this has been helpful and useful. And do check the blood pressures, yours and surrounding people, and make sure they get adequately treated.